Welcome everyone to another edition of the Sports Q&A series here on Schleg Daddy TV. A reminder, these episodes happen every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday on this channel. If you want your questions answered in future Q&A episodes, just go to Twitter, tweet your sports questions to at pfspot underscore Schlegel. Again, that's at pfspot underscore Schlegel. And best questions get answered every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday right here on this channel. Let's get started with this Q&A though. At Dante's... 61680 asks, who is the better power forward for the Bulls, Horace Grant or Dennis Rodman? Well, you know, both of them were the core piece, you know, the third wheel of three straight championship teams. You know, Grant was a part of that first three-peat team in 91 to 93, Rodman 96 to 98. Grant was better on the offensive end. And Rodman, I think, was better on the glass and on the defensive end. I probably would go with Rodman just because the Bulls' success from that 96 through 98 stretch was better overall than the 91 to 93 team. I also think when you look at Rodman, you can't understate or underemphasize, uh, overemphasize, excuse me, his importance to that team in terms of being a necessary distraction to take some of the attention and heat and focus away from Michael Jordan. I guess something that often gets lost in the shuffle when talking about Rodman and his time with the Chicago Bulls. When he came into the fold, he took a lot of attention away from Michael Jordan, and I think that was a very positive thing for MJ, whether or not he'll ever acknowledge that. So I'll go with Rodman, but that's not to be smirch Horace in any way, shape, or form. At UF Gator Chomp 93, what was a more painful experience for you, watching your Cubs choke away Game 6 and 7 to the Marlins in 03? Um, or the Bears losing to Indian Super Bowl 41. I think I answered a question somewhat similar to this in the last Q&A. And thanks for bringing up the painful memories, Dylan asshole. Um, I'll go with the Cubs because at least with the Bears, I can technically remember watching them win Super Bowl 20, even though I was four years old when it happened. You also have to keep in mind that all season long in 2006, I was preparing myself for the fact that the Bears were a damn good team, probably were going to get to the Super Bowl, but because Rex Grossman was their starting quarterback, they were not going to win it. So I had no unrealistic expectations. I had no false hopes, especially once the Patriots choked away that big lead in the AFC Championship game to the Colts. I said, that's it. The Bears can't beat the Colts. You had Tommy Harris out. You had Mike Brown out. You had Rex Grossman as your starting quarterback. I knew from the jump street that it was not going to happen happened. I knew it. It's painful. It still sucks to this day. I still choose to really not think about that game. But game six and seven of 2003 NLCS has to be worse because you had Mark Pryor and Kerry Wood. This was supposed to be the moment. This was supposed to be when the curse of the Billy Goat would die. They get to the World Series and then they, they would have, in my opinion, beat that Yankees team that year. No question about it. You know, everything was looking right for the Cubs. You had the future rotation of professional baseball in Kerry Wood and Mark Pryor and freaking Zambrano. In game six and seven, you had Mark Pryor who won 18 games that year, and then you were going to have Kerry Wood if you needed it in game number seven. I thought there was no way, no how, that the Cubs were going to choke away that 3-1 series lead. Don't forget about the loss in game five down in Florida when Beckett shut them down. Um, so that's the more painful one, I'd have to say. At John's now underscore 1993, will the Chicago Bulls ever win a championship in the Derrick Rose uh, Thibodeau era? Well, they seem to be constructing themselves for a decent chance at a run at it this upcoming season. Um, at this point, I would say no, only because I'm so uncertain about Derrick Rose's ability to stay healthy. Because even with all the moves the Bulls have made in the offseason, it's still predicated on Derrick Rose not only uh, coming back, but coming back and staying healthy. And then not only that, playing at the all-star level he used to play at. It's a lot of ifs, a lot of ifs. So at the moment, I'll go with no, but I, of course, could change that opinion. At Sam H. 1217, who is going to be the next NFL team to move their franchise and to where? If I had to guess two teams off the top of my head at this point, I would think number one would be the Oakland Raiders moving to Los Angeles. I think that's a fit that works for all parties involved, and I think at some point in time that that will happen. The other franchise might also move back to L.A., and that might be the St. Louis Rams. You know, They were in L.A. for years, years, and as a result, it would not surprise me 
uh, to see them eventually move back to Los Angeles. Those would be the two teams that stand out to me the most at this point. At Mika Kivi, will Lance Stevenson be an all-star next season? No, I don't think he'll be an all-star next season. I think he'll definitely uh, bring something that was very needed to the Charlotte Hornets and help them improve a little bit. Uh, but I don't think he'll be ready to be an all-star just yet. Maybe two or three years down the road, though. At Simmons underscore Sam1, can you make an argument that Roy Halladay is the best pitcher of all time? I could, but it would probably involve me being extremely drunk and incredibly stupid. I'm just shooting you straight, man. In no way, shape, or form is Roy Halladay the best pitcher of all time. In no way, shape, or form can you even really necessarily make the argument that he was the best pitcher of his time. Some might try, but I think they would ultimately fail. Halladay was a very good pitcher. It's a shame that injuries shorten his career because I thought he had a chance to become a Hall of Famer, but best pitcher of all time? Fuck no. Not even close to the best pitcher of my lifetime. Not even close. At Sam192, now that Stevenson has left the Pacers, any reason not to put 50 bucks down on the Raptors winning the East at 25 to 1 odds? So let me get this straight. If you put down 50 bucks and they made it to the NBA Finals, you're talking about winning what? Like 1250 bucks, Something like that? Why would you not do that? All for 50 bucks? That's a pretty good gamble. You know, I'm not saying that the Raptors are going to win the East, but you're looking at 50 bucks. It's not a ton of money. And the potential to maybe win 1250 bucks, you got to take that chance every freaking time because you never know what could happen. You know, after a whole season, are you going to really miss that 50 bucks? No. But if you won that 1250 bucks, I'm sure you could find something to do with that money, couldn't you? At Madden God 45, do you think the Chiefs would and should give Alex Smith a big contract? I think I'm actually going to do a video about this. Um, would they? Yes. Should they? Mm. Again, I'll probably do a video about this topic coming up this week. At Alex Shirley 10, what do you think of the Ken Wisenhut hire for the Titans, and will he turn the Titans around? Um, I like the hire of Wisenhunt for the Titans. You know, you're bringing in an offensive-minded head coach who has an ability to get more out of quarterbacks. You're trying to get something out of Jake Locker to justify the eighth overall pick in 2011 that you spent on him. But also knowing that if it doesn't work out with Locker and in particular he can't stay healthy, then you're going to be turning right back around and drafting another quarterback in this upcoming NFL draft. And then at that point in time, you've got Wisenhunt there. I thought it was a solid hire for him. I think he can turn around the Titans at some point in time. I just don't anticipate um, showing much in the way of results in 2014. At Jordan Higgins ask, who are the top five NBA players in the league right now? Top five players in the league right now. Um, LeBron. Durant, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know what, that's kind of sad, it really is, it's just, it's just striking what lack of elite players there truly is in the NBA today, because you've got a couple of them that are stand above the rest, maybe Carmelo Anthony might fit into that category, might, but there's so many other guys, I guess, that is based off a of perspective, but there's not like a real clear-cut top five. I guess you could still throw Kobe in there based off of reputation and accomplishments, but we're not sure how he's going to come back off of his uh, you know, back-to-back -back major injuries, frankly. So I think, I think it's more an indication of how sad the NBA is in some ways and the fact of that I couldn't just rattle off the top five players off the top of my head. Damn. That's sad. Really sad. At Devin Throw, who do you think is the best cornerback in the NFL? Uh, I probably would go with Richard Sherman. If somebody's going to say Patrick Peterson, I'm not going to begrudge them that very much. Um, if somebody said Darrell Revis, again, you know, there's an argument to be made there. For my money at this particular moment, maybe I would say Richard Sherman. But I don't think the difference is all that great, especially as much as Richard Sherman might think in Richard Sherman's own mind. God bless him. At WashCash81, hey, Schleg Daddy, what's your opinion of MLB.tv? Is it any good, and if not, where could they improve things? I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't watch MLB.tv, so I really have no functional opinion on it one way or another. Just telling you how I see it. I think more so when I look at baseball in general, I just – 
it, I, I see it entering a downturn, if that makes sense. It seems like there's not that much interest in it compared to, you know, maybe a few years ago. Um, so, and I know that definitely holds true in my case. I pay attention, but I just don't follow it as avidly. And to be fair, from my standpoint, this just be, might be my standpoint, it could be in large part because I know the Cubs are in a rebuilding mode and it's more about the farm system and trades and the draft than it is the actual big league club at this point in time. So as a result, I'm more focused on those things while watching and paying attention to some games, sure, uh, than I am the actual you know, entire season. At Edsel4 finishes out this Q&A by asking, which young center would you rather build around? DeMarcus Cousins or Andre Drummond? And which center do you think is better? I personally would probably take DeMarcus Cousins, even though sometimes I have some questions about his attitude and his work ethic. I just like DeMarcus Cousins better. That's not to be smirch Andre Drummond, but I think Cousins has more, um, more accomplishments behind him. I've seen more out of him, and I probably would rather build around him because even though he's been in the league a few seasons, he's still not that old at all. I mean, he's still got a lot of NBA shelf life left, and I still don't even think he's come close to hitting and fulfilling his maximum peak potential as an NBA player. So there you go. Thanks to all of you guys that submitted your questions for this sports Q&A for Sunday. Reminder again, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, sports Q&A is here on the Schleg Daddy TV channel. Just go to Twitter and tweet your questions to at PFSpot underscore Schlegel. That information will be in the description box down below.